Hi, this is Graham from Gel Studios. One of the things which we often have in, in our projects is galleries of images um, and we need to make them in such a way that it's easy for the end client to pop in and uh, add new images, remove images or change the titles. What I've just mocked up here is a very basic five image gallery um, where by clicking on each individual one shows you a picture uh, and a custom title underneath. Uh, now if we have a quick look at the HTML of this we can see that uh, this is actually all done at the moment in the content which might be fine for some uh, but maybe not for end clients which might not be proficient or comfortable um, in editing raw HTML code. What we're going to do now is we're going to take this uh, gallery and we're going to put it into MIGX. MIGX is a way of taking template variables and adding the ability to multiply them. Uh, so this is going to be a perfect example because what we're going to have is we're going to make a template variable and we're going to have five instances of that template variable on an individual resource. So if you just pop along to your system package management and install MIGX and also PHP thumb of because we're going to use that documentation for installing MIGX is very good. Uh, just pop along and there's uh, step-by-step instructions. Um, pay attention to adding the actions to the manager and the parameters. These are all pretty important. Once you've done that, jump back into your manager and we're just going to have a quick look at some template variables that I've made. Now what we need to do for this is we need to make three template variables. We need to make the MIGX template variable itself which is called gallery, we'll come back to that in a moment. A template variable for the image and if we just jump into this one we can see that I've given it a simple name and a description. We set the input type to image but we've left the template access blank. This is very important. Same again for the image title some basic input information, a text input type, but no template access. Now this is where it all comes together. If we pop along to the gallery, we can see that the input type of this is MIGX and there's some information which is put down here. Now if you're a bit worried about using JSON or you haven't used JSON before, don't worry. Uh, the example which is given on uh, the MIGX site itself, if we just jump down here, is a very good start in place. And if you're worried that you've written anything and you're not sure if it's valid or not, there's plenty of JSON parsers online where you can just paste your JSON in and they'll tell you immediately if what you've put is valid or not. But a very, very quick run through of what these fields mean. We've got the main structure itself, which is relevant to a tab. So when you're adding an item in, this will show one tab with the title of add an image. And inside that tab, we'll have two fields. We'll have a field, which we're going to be calling title, we're going to be giving it a readable string of titles, so this is what you'll see. And then we're referencing the template variable that we made a moment ago called image title. And the same again underneath for the image itself. These are very, very important because these values that we have here are what we're going to use later on to access the stored values. What we see in grid here is this is what is rendered when you're actually inside the manager but you're not adding anything. I'll show you these later on but effectively just some basic widths that you can set, um, whether it's sortable so you can drag things around and then obviously the important data index title, these match up. So this shows you previews of what you added. So if we just quickly jump along to our resource and I'll show you what I mean. So underneath template variables, we'll see that we have this. Now this is what the form tabs was referencing to underneath here. So as you can see, we've got one tab, we've got a title and an image. So we'll put kitty one in. Just simply drop down, find where we put the images and put it in. And this is what the grid column is, in for, is all about. This is how it shows you the preview. So we're going to go and add in another one. So as you can see, this is a very easy and a fixed way of adding in information, especially for an end client. What you can also do 
to make things just a little bit quicker is you can duplicate existing values and you can also overtype what's shown actually in the box. So you can very very quickly add in many many items. There's also the ability with uh, MIGX to do AJAX uploading uh, which is a bit more complicated. We can maybe run through that in another tutorial if people are interested. But effectively you can have a media resource, you can mass upload that media re uh, resource and then import them all in so very very quick way of doing it. The sortable option which we specified in the uh, grid columns allows us to be able to take things and drag them about. So what that means as well is that we can also customize how and what things are ordered and when. So we're just going to save that now. So now that we've got that there how do we actually get that shown to the screen? How do we actually get this from here into something that the that the user can see when they're actually browsing the site. Now the way that I'm going to do this is I'm going to put this actually in the template itself. Now you could actually put the call in the content but we're going to say for this that the user has access to put in some content into the content such as title and page information and then we're going to render the gallery images underneath. So we just quickly pop along to base template. We should see something that I've made earlier. Now get image list is a snippet which comes provided with MIGX and it's very basic it takes two parameters it takes the template variable name now this is the template variable of the combined two which we've used so this is gallery so as you can see the reference between the two and then a template chunk that you're going to use to output so this is called blog gallery so if we just quickly jump underneath here we'll go to blog gallery. Now as you can see when we put in the field types in our form tabs remember I said that the fields were very very important this is because they're referenced in here so it's very important that you remember these because uh, they're not the names of the variables that you pass in if you call them that thing you can but sometimes for terms of usability and making things a bit easier to code you might want to keep these things a little bit smaller what we've also done here is we've put in a PHP thumb of of the actual image with an attribute of zoom cropping set to one. So what this means is that even if the aspect ratios for it aren't the same, it will crop the image down and keep everything in proportion. With regards to PHP thumb of, if you pop to that on the uh, modex add-on resource, there's a really handy link at the end of this line here. This will show you pretty much every option that you can do with PHP thumb of. Uh, so as you can see, we're using a very basic version, but you can also put blurs, black and whites, rounded edges, although you can do these obviously with CSS now, uh, rotating again with CSS, but there's lots of options and stuff there which you can do. What this also means is that it's not loading up a huge image, uh, so even if it was loading something you started with CSS, uh, it might not show the, the best way that you want it to. So let's just have a little look at how this renders now to the screen. There we go. So as you can see the difference between these two images, this is the basic one and this is the after one with the PHP thumb of. As you can see everything in the aspect ratio is the same uh, and also this one here it's recognised that it's uh, longer than it is wide so it's cropped it down and again here it's kept it all the same. So as you can see the end results are pretty similar and probably better because we've taken away the, the uh, area for error from the end user and given them something which is a lot easier to use. So if we just pop back in and uh, tidy this up a bit, if we pop back into our home now, let's just add in our last kitty. We'll drag him in place. And what we can do now is we can get rid of this and then we can maybe put on the rich text editor. Let's just reload it. So 
this is a real example here we might have actual text content which the end user wants to have here and the gallery section there and if we just refresh this we've got a really nice laid out simple gallery with the ability to pop through it's also again extremely easy if anybody wants to update it just a couple of clicks fixed user input areas it just completely reduces the error and there we go so if you have any questions or you'd like to suggest maybe something else for me to run through and let everybody know uh, please do so in the comments below um, and yeah follow me on Twitter and Facebook and I'll try my best to help everybody out cheers